Okay, so here on disk one, we're going to be taking a look at a lot of things, but mostly we're going to be focusing on trying to get you comfortable with 3D Studio Max and its interface. Creating objects, moving around in the viewport, selecting them, moving them, grouping them, renaming them, and many of the features associated with it, like shadows in the viewport, nice lighting, and so forth. Now in addition to that, we are going to be taking a look at how we can take simple shapes like primitives, such as cylinders, boxes, and so forth, and using modifiers to make very complex shapes out of it, such as what we see here, which is just composed of a box, a bend shape, and a twist. We're also going to be taking a look at something called Boolean operations, which allows us to use simple primitives and create complex shapes out of them by adding and subtracting one from the other. This is a very powerful tool and one that typically wasn't recommended in older versions of Max, but currently definitely worth the time. We're also going to be taking a look at composing a good scene, cinematography, shot angles, and so forth. It's very important to pay attention to composition because a lot of times how you present your work can be just as important as the work itself. We're also going to be taking a look at various ways to organize your scene in large numbers of objects in your scene. In this particular case, we may be looking at creating an army of angry squirrels. You may be wondering how that applies to the city scene. You'll just have to wait and see. Additionally, we're going to be taking a look at the various types of maps, such as bump map, diffuse maps, and specular maps. All of these, when put together, can create very convincing scenes. And we're going to be taking a look at each one and how we can create them, both procedurally and from photographs. We're then going to get into how we can place them on our objects precisely by using texture coordinates. These texture coordinates will tell 3D Studio Max how to wrap that image onto our objects. It's a little bit of a complex topic, but once you understand it, the sky's the limit. You can do so much with it. We're also going to be taking a look at more modeling techniques, because the more techniques you know, the quicker you can get to a particular shape and to start populating your scene with the objects that you want. And you can kind of keep that creative flow going. So we're going to be taking a look at lofts and converting things like splines into shapes to create very quick pipes and intricate work like you see on the gate there. After that, we're going to be taking a look at lighting. All the things that go into lighting, such as the technical aspects, how do you place the light, the shadows, what kind of problems you can run into. Additionally, we're going to be taking a look at how we can paint with light. Painting with light is a concept where you basically put light where you need it doesn't rely on global illumination or any of that. We can talk about that in the next disc. But it basically goes over how to create a very nice lit scene. All right, so we have a lot of things to go over, so let's get started.